Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to talk to the author of the book, The Puppet Master. How are you, Ron? I'm fine. It, How are you? I'm uh, great. Cap? I am doing so good. I just love the fact that you've given us this political thriller, legal thriller, suspense, mystery, crime, courtroom drama from a lawyer turned author. I mean, tell me about your background. This is a lot. Well, um, it it is. I mean, uh, my background is often divided into three sort of chapters. Uh, the first chapter, I was a youngster in school, and I took up with gymnastics and loved the sport and worked hard at it and became an Olympic gymnast. Wow. Then I came back from that and went to law school and went out and worked hard to build a law career. And then um, one day a few years ago, um, a group of guys I play golf with and have lunch with and talk about politics and books and movies, um, I was being critical of a, a New York Times best-selling author I actually uh, love and read all of his books, but I was a little put out because I got to the end of one of his novels and there was no closure and no warning that that was going to happen. He had to come back and read the next novel. And I was critical of that. And one of my friends at this lunch said, well, if you're such a wise guy, um, why don't you show us what you can do? Ah. And being being hopefully a good lawyer, uh, I pretended I didn't hear and changed the subject. But being sort of a competitive personality, I came home and told my wife, <laughs> I think I have to try and write a novel. And that is how I wrote The Puppet Master, which was actually the first in the Brooks Latello series uh, but when I wrote that, I didn't know the difference between point of view and voice and pace and character development. I just had an idea for a story, so I wrote it to meet the challenge. I found I liked that so much right. that um, I started reading how-to books and going to writing conferences and I then sat down with a little more knowledge uh, and wrote the second novel in the series, The Amendment Killer. Mm -hmm. Since I knew a little more about what I was doing at that point, that's the book I released first. And mm -hmm. that uh, I was fortunate to see become a bestseller. And when I finished that, and knew I was committed, I went back to the Puppet Master and rewrote that several times to put it in a presentable form. Right. And so that was released as the prequel to The Amendment Killer because it actually takes place at an earlier point in time. Well, I understand from the notes I have um that you are diabetic, and in the amendment killer, you made the 11-year-old kidnap a victim diabetic, and then you and your wife, Barbie, are donating 50% of the prof uh, profits from that book to diabetes research and education. Thank you. Well, um, we're very uh, happy to do that and yeah. very committed to doing that. Uh, usually find out with uh, fiction writers that there is something in their characters uh, that have something to do with them in real life. Sure. And in The Amendment Killer, it, there's a uh, legal battle going on in the Supreme Court, um, and the justice who holds the swing vote uh, gets a text during oral arguments that says, we have your granddaughter, here's what you need to do. Mm -hmm. I added that character uh, to the novel to spice it up a little bit uh, and also to bring attention to a, a cause that, as you say, is near and dear to my heart, diabetes. Um, and it, it, it gave us a platform to make the book more exciting, uh, but also to bring attention to um, a subject 
that needs attention. Uh, there's 30 million uh, diabetics in the United States today. That's one in 10 Americans. And so um, we were happy to be able to include that element in the amendment killer. I think that's great. I've got to ask you, how much of the headlines inspired your fiction writing? Well, um, the truth is a lot. You know, uh, I uh, have been a courtroom lawyer for decades, so I, I have that down fairly well, or at least as well as I'm going to. But I am also kind of an amateur political junkie. Mm -hmm. um, I don't favor the left side of the aisle or the right side of the aisle. I think they're all, uh, for the most part, doing less than they can for our country. Right. Um, and so it was a subject that just <coughs> came to me naturally. And, uh, you know, on the one hand, uh, I often get described as ripping my stories because they are very timely uh, from the headlines. But I'm often accused as well as creating the headlines. So I wrote the puppet master about this vigilante serial killer of corrupt politicians before the mail bomber of recent times started sending mail bombs in the mail to uh, prominent politicians. So, uh, truth be told, I get my ideas from the news, um, but I've had a couple of people accuse me of making the news, which I take as flattery. <laughs> it is flattering. Well, tell us a little bit more about the Puppet Master, if you could. Uh, what? Give us some background, what's going on in the Puppet Master. Sure. In, in the Puppet Master, um, there um, are a number of prominent politicians in successive days who are murdered. Mm. And then, uh, on the streets of the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., there is sort of a homeless man uh, ranting and raving that he did it. And he gets arrested for doing it, and it turns out he's a man who lost everything he had right. uh, in the financial collapse in 2008 and 2009. Um, he is arrested, and he's put on trial in Cyrus Brooks's uh, courtroom. Mm -hmm. uh, Cyrus Brooks is one of my two protagonists. Uh, homicide investor, uh, investigator Frank Latello is the other. Um, Latello was actually involved in the arrest of this uh, accused who becomes a defendant in a murder trial. And he comes to believe that um, there may be more to this story than appears to be the case, including some strange goings-on deep within the White House. And he approaches Brooks, who he had never met, and uh, tells him that he has doubts. Um, they form somewhat of an unusual alliance, putting both of their careers in jeopardy to do so, uh, to kind of get at the truth uh, before the jury decides the, the, the fate of the accused and our country's political system as well. Wow. I love it. I'm going to get this. Okay, tell us where we can find out about you, how we can find out about the Puppet Master and the Amendment Killer, and stay up to date with you. One easy place to do all of that, go to my website, which is www.ronaldsbarak, be uh -huh. like boy, A-R-A-K, dot right. com. Uh -huh. And you will be able to do all of the above. You will find out about my books, including The Puppet Master and The Amendment Killer. You'll find out a little bit about me as well, 
And if you want to know more, you can actually sign up for my newsletter and get updates in your inbox. Well, Ronald, I really enjoyed our conversation. I don't know her, but you tell your wife, Barbie, that I think she's great too, okay? I will do that for sure. I do it all the time, but she tells me not enough. (laughs) You're wonderful. Thank you. Continued success, okay? Thank you, and thank your listeners. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.